This is Steve James. I'm an illustrator. I've been a longtime digital artist, cutting my teeth on the TI 994A in the early 80s with a primitive tablet called the Super Sketch. I've been a user of Photoshop and Corel Painter, preferring Painter for its natural media brushes. In recent years, I've incorporated more 3D into my workflow. ZBrush has been an important part of this transition. With early 3D illustration, the time spent modeling in no way could keep up with a traditional 2D workflow. With ZBrush, I don't have to worry about a complex modeling process and spend more time creating the characters. Often for picture books, I use ZBrush to position the characters in multiple views, making it easy to keep the characters on model. The work I put into my 3D characters is not lost as I'm able to pose, light, and render them for different images that I can use as reference, as a base to paint on, or as a final element. I'm drawn to spend more time in ZBrush because it gives me more flexible workflow and increased speed in iteration. Also because I just find it enjoyable. It's the easiest way to get what's in my head onto the screen. In this series of videos, I'd like to share a few things from my workflow. In the block-in stage, I'll define the major forms of my character with spheres. This allows me to experiment with my forms and not worry about final meshes or geometry. I'll then combine all of these shapes into one mesh with a tool called DynaMesh. In order to have a mesh that is easy to work with, I'll use a tool called ZRemesher to create a clean mesh. Before I do that though, I'll do some grouping to help ZRemesher give me a good polygon flow. Having this clean mesh will help when it comes time to sculpt and also paint my character. In this series of videos, I'll go through my process of creating this foundation. I won't be covering the sculpting or the poly paint in these videos, but I will go over how I use layers to create multiple expressions for my characters. 